Good morning, everybody. This is a great opportunity to discuss with my colleagues and uh, uh, the experts came from outside uh, regarding the National Monument and Antiquities, Mission on National Monument and Antiquities. Uh, uh, first of all, I thank uh, Director Madhulika, Dr. Madhulika Samanto, uh, has invited me to deliver the lecture on documentation of the temples. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Actually, we are always documenting uh, only antiquities, not properly monuments. We are not documenting monuments only. We are protecting the monuments. But here, uh, the initiative of the temple survey, basically, you can see next. This was created in the year 1955. The purpose of the creation is not till fulfilled, I can say. The purpose of the creation of the temple survey basically to document the temples all over the India. But will till we are doing uh, slowly, we are doing progressing, and uh, some uh, documentation was happened in northern India as well as in southern India. Particularly, two branches were was created by ASI uh, for documenting the temples uh, in the name of Temple Survey Project North as well as Temple Survey Project South. Uh, the creation basically uh, aimed to document, not to protect, not to uh, conserve all entire monuments. This is the aim is, but basically try to protect, uh, to document the temples. <coughs> but till date, we don't have any concept how we going to uh, document the temples. Uh, our predecessors basically before my uh, 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 service. My predecessors uh, in South as well as in North, uh, they have documented basically based on the dynasties wise of temples, basically the dynasty wise of temples. Uh, 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 they concentrated uh, like Chola, Pallava, next <coughs> Actually, dynasty is they document basically. Uh, they have not elaborately documented the temples of India. Um, uh, more example, I can say, like in South, you can see the uh, temples of Pallavas, as well as temples of Pandyas, uh, as well as the temples of Rashtrakutas. Likewise, the temples was uh, documented here. Uh, other than this, uh, the other than this previous one, Munadi. 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 The purpose of the creation basically to understand the uh, construction methodology of the temples in India. So many uh, uh, publications are came out uh, for the uh, uh, construction methodology and style ground of temple architecture in India. Uh, but we uh, concentrated basically the major uh, architectural features only, not any minor features, how it was evolved is not properly documented. That is a question before the temple survey. Uh, our previous DG has discussed a lot with me uh, regarding how do we document temples properly. Temples we are documenting on generalization pattern, like Rastrakoda. You can take it as a generalization, as a if you uh, Astrakoda temple is there, we select ten temples. We simply document the features of the characters of the temples, and we can simply say this is Astrakoda. Similarly, Chola. Chola also we have several temples are there in Chola, Chola temples, but we selected few temples and documented. Then we express this is the Chola temples. Similarly, Pallavas. That way we have documented in our uh, previous uh, years. Uh, uh, but we don't have any concept how to uh, document how the temples was evaluated in Indian context. We probably yet we are yet to not document properly how it was evaluated. Simply we can say for southern India I can say, uh, say from the Mandagaputta inscriptions. Mandagaputta inscriptions onwards we are talking about the evolution of temples architecture in particularly in Tamil Nadu. The Mandagaputta inscriptions clearly gives 
that is a Sanskrit inscription, uh, gives yedat anistatam atrumam alokam, asudam visitra sittenam nirma pitam nirpena brahmeshwara vishnu laksitayana. He is the first person to visit the his title is Visitha Chitta Mahindra Varma. He has carved out a temple without brick, metal, mortar, and timber. Timberless construction was constructed. At Mandagopatu, he used the material with a rock. Rock was used, rock was given out, and from there, the temple architecture evolved. With a general notion of the Tamil, Tamil, particularly the land of Tamil, we are considering the architectural evolutions. Uh, some scholars, uh, basically the uh, scholars uh, of architecture, they say uh, the uh, rocket architecture evolved from Chalukya. They can say evolved from Chalukya. But there is a question is arising here. Uh, Chalukya architecture means we are considering the Mangalesa's Badami inscription. Mangalesa's Badami inscriptions date back to 578 uh, AD. The uh, Pallavas comes a little later, only 25 years later they are coming to exist here. The Mangalesa inscriptions uh, gives uh, the rocket in the cave of Badami was created by Mangalesa of the Chalukyan kingdom. But when you see, the Badami cave is the evolved form of the cave architecture. That is not a primitive form of the cave, cave architecture. When you compare to Pallava, Mahendra Oman cave architecture, it is a primitive. Mahendra Roman cave architecture is generally a primitive form of architecture, it is a simple form of cave architecture. Uh, then, in this circumstance, how we are uh, calling, it was uh, uh, come from Chalukyan region. That, that question is also arising now, nowadays due to the new research carried out by my, my predecessor, Dr. Dayalan. Dr. Dayalan has carried out the Pandya, the cave temples of Pandya was uh, he surveyed and he documented and published the book. Uh, in that uh, book he says, uh, in Tamil Nadu we are getting more than 4th four, uh, four century BC, 4th century AD onwards we are having the rocket temples. Particularly he insists the Pilyarpati rocket temple is the primitive form of the rocket temple available in Tamil Nadu. Not only Pilyarpati, it is in Arita Pati as well as in Kuntratu, as well as nearby uh, um, uh, Thirnavedi, there is a temple, uh, there is a cave architecture is there. All the cave architecture belongs to Pandyas. Pandyas, yeah, little, uh, yeah, uh, temple architecture belongs to little bit earlier than the Pallavas as well as the before the Chalukyas. Chalukyas. So in these circumstances, our uh, objective is to try to re-examine how the temple architecture was evolved here, particularly in India. We are generally says uh, uh, the temple architecture evolved from the megalithic <coughs> burial system. That is our connotation. Megalithic burial has given a guidance for the evolution of stupa architecture. From stupa architecture to it has developed as a uh, rocket architecture. From rocket architecture to we change to structural temples. We are having um, evolution pattern all over India particularly. There is no argument in that. Actually, uh, uh, from megalithic it is uh, started means. So we have to study. We are concentrating megalithic only in the concept of burials. We are not seeing what purpose the megalithic burials was created. The reason behind the burials, burial creation is something existed, but we are not even seen or we are not explored the things properly. So that is why our team has decided uh, to carry out some evolution aspect. Actually, guiding spirit, uh, spirit of this uh, project is our, my former DG, um, uh, Srimati Indiavri has given me why you are not going to see the evolution? She always asks evolutions. The evolutions of the temple. I am seeing the gigantic temples today. I don't know how it was evolved. She always put the questions before me. So that is why we are, our plan is try to uh, uh, try to address uh, what we are going to see lesser known temples of. Uh, 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 in particular in Tamil Nadu, that is where our project has been taken based on that we have initiated the documents also. Before going to that uh, chapter, I would like to tell you next. Uh, this branch already has carried out 
following projects. Temples Survey has carried out following projects, particularly the temples of Pallavas, temples of Tetan. Uh, we can classify a uh, temple architecture based on the dynasty as well as based on the regions also. Some, some scholars have uh, taken as a region-wise, some scholars have taken as a dynasty-wise. Similarly, so, uh, the more than seven projects have been carried out uh, in uh, Temple Survey. Besides, there are three uh, projects also carried out. Uh, one is uh, Temples of uh, Pallavas, <laughs> Cave Temples of Pallava. It deals with only Cave Temples of Pallava, not any structural temples. Then it comes the uh, Cave Temples of Deca. Particularly, it, uh, it starts from Vahadaka period onwards. Then the architectural temple of Kerala, that is concentrated in a region, uh, Kerala. Then temples of Gangas of Karnataka. Then survey of Chola temples of Karnataka. Uh, then survey of structural temples in uh, Rastrakudas also. Then Pandyas, Uttarayas, Pandya, the chief place was lived next. Among the uh, project, only five projects has been uh, published till date. Only five projects have been published. Uh, next. The remaining uh, two projects, it's on pipeline, it, uh, it could be published. Besides my uh, two more um, uh, predecessors conducted uh, temples of Gungu region, uh, temples of Kagatiyas also, that is not submitted till date, the project report has not been submitted. In this basis, uh, the uh, temple survey has been carried out the work. Next. Our, uh, our basic ideology of the uh, documentation is uh, how we classify in the documentation of temples. Simply we can take it as a dynasty wise or temples, or we can take it as a region wise, or we can take it as architectural or ethnographic importance, or it gives some inclusion uh, ideas. Based on that only we till date we uh, documented and we are following the same pattern till now how we go and document. That is a confusion is existing with us. How to document? I need some answers from your side. Then only we can go proceed how to document further. You know, we are always doing with di dynasty, dynasty, dynasty. We are having actually so many problems is there in architecture. Uh, the dynasty temples are not purely available in Tamil Nadu. Actually, so uh, here you can see the example for Madurai, Sri Rangam and uh, Rameshwaram temples. They, uh, the, those temples are continuously patronized by the kings. In this circumstance, who was the creator of the first temple is the question. We are unable to trace that question, but we are having the evidences. They used the materials and reused and reconstructed. But that thing we have to find out. Then only we can able to trace the reconstruction, trace the reconstruction of the, the uh, evolution of the temples. That is why this is the existing uh, methodology by our temple survey. So our idea is try to find out new concept how to how to be identify this how this temple was evolved next. Well, for dynasty ways, I can show the examples how the dynasty ways uh, temples was documented here in our survey. Next, uh, region ways also some uh, uh, carried out the work, and the region ways uh, those temples has been excavated like Andhra, Buddhist Andhra, and the Kungu region, Kerala, as well as the Deccan. Similarly, uh, some uh, region has been selected, and that region was been uh, fully explored. Next. Near about 621 temple was documented by temple survey till date. Uh, we are having the entire documentation including photo documentation as well as uh, drawing documentations. Next. Uh, the preliminary is actually method of survey I can not, I want to say here. Actually basically we follow a system of uh, methodology for temple architecture like excavations or explorations. Generally, we follow this is the methodology for surveying the temples. Uh, the methodology, we can say the preliminary survey. First, we will select as a preliminary survey. The preliminary survey is just, uh, I, I don't know which temple belongs to that. I have to go visit and see, then I have to select, then only we can go for documentation. Similarly, like a, it's a village to village survey only. Village to our, our predecessors of the, uh, the department has surveyed so many 
villages and they documented temples are available in these, those villages. That uh, details are available with us. Uh, besides, in Tamil Nadu, near about 43,000 temples are there. Near about 43,000 temples are there. Among the 43,000 temples, 9,000 9, temples belongs to heritage category. Everything is in huge complexes, huge complex temples. That is why we are unable to trace the original structure of the temple. Uh, this is the pattern. First, according to the uh, uh, selection of the area, we will uh, choose some area. Then we, uh, we will try to see what are the publications are available regarding that, uh, that area. Our uh, documentation, this is what they did in our documentation purpose. As well as we will see some uh, exploratory notes also. Uh, then we particularly will uh, use topography to visit the village. And then available inscriptions also we can see. So many inscriptions are copied by our Based on the inscription also we will go, move and select the temples. Then physically we will go and visit the village and confirm it is there or not. Actually now I started the work, I recently experienced. Near Madras there is one ancient temple, that is was Anagabutu temple, that was a Chola temple. We saw uh, just now. It is entirely demolished and reconstructed with new materials. It is surprising to us. So many inscriptions are there. The inscriptions are available in the ASI. But the temple is not there now. The temple is disappeared. The temple disappeared due to actually people not aware about the importance of the historic temple. They simply wants to construct temple, they don't want to uh, uh, conserve the temple. The concept is not available. They are not having the mind to protect the temples. Similarly, I saw the temple, the entire complex was removed and newly constructed with cement. Fully, fully new, modernized, they got uh, made, made as a temple. Similar uh, incidents are happening here. That is why now the port also interfering to stop such activities. That is why we will go village to village survey. There we see the temples and the condition of the temple and we will select. Next. Then the detailed photo documentation. After the uh, selection of the temples, we will go for the photo, photo documentation. That is the practice we are using till date in temple survey. Uh, we will take the elevation photograph as well as the uh, antiquities available, sculptures available and the plan of plan of the temple from all the sites we will document. If now, now we, are in the, we are using the aerial photography also to docu document the plan, entire plan and how it was spread, that is documenting through this uh, aerial photography. Next, the drawing document. Actually, drawing is the main important thing for the temple architecture. <coughs> drawing document can give detailed information than the photography. That is why generally in our temple survey project, we uh, do uh, only manual drawings. That is why we are always requesting manual drawing is required. But now the photochromatic methodology is there, but how it is useful is not experienced in our till date. Just photochromatic meta, 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 method is there, technology is there, nobody has used. Accuracy is, uh, only uh, comes from the manual drawings. So, so, the temple survey of Arkea Surya always practiced the manual drawing first. Priority has given to manual drawing. Now we are trying to introduce the photochromatic also, but no expertise is available in AC. So, we have to hire the expertise from outside, then only we can able to learn. Next. Based on that, actually, temple survey possesses 1949 archival drawings. <coughs> This is the very interesting feature. Actually, Temple Survey possesses 1,949 archival drawings. That is the masterpiece of our Temple Survey, Southern Regions work. So, you go with this drawing, now you can find. Such a thing is also happening. Next. See, this is the basic uh, drawing uh, um, uh, uh, pattern of uh, our Temple Survey project. Uh, we uh, we uh, document the entire plan in different aspects with the expansion. <coughs> Next, we will go for the elevation search. Elevations and section, they, they, those drawings produced on manually. 
This is not produced on protogrammatic or any other technological material. Uh, the, 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 these drawings are available till the temple survey project. We are having the class sections, elevations, and each and every uh, um, uh, architectural features are properly documented by ASI. Next. See the Vaigunda uh, Parmal temple, Kanchipuram. Such expertise craftsmen are not available today. That is a very, very sad to say here. Actually, we have not created a next generation draftsman in our field. The next generation draftsmen are required. Actually, the manual drawings only is a final uh, drawing that gives authentic evidence of all temple architectures. If you go for photogrammetic, it gives some errors also, plus or minus. <coughs> but the manual drawing gives the perfect documentation, but we don't have sufficient hands of draftsmen now. All are, are retired. We are using the retired person for documenting also. The uh, uh, culture of teaching the uh, architectural drawing of temple has not been carried forward. That requires, essentially required for ASI. Then only the ASI temple survey will stand. Otherwise, the ASI temple survey will disappear. I always i am asking my other authorities, try to pro provide draftsmen to temple survey. At least, temple survey requires draftsmen. Then only we can able to save our architectural features. Otherwise, we, this, we lost everything. Next. Similarly, just I come to my uh, topic. I recently initiated the work. This is the work I have uh, taken up. Uh, survey of public uh, exploration of lesser known unprotected, especially unprotected. I don't want protected. I don't want to see the protected, uh, protected temple. I want to see the unprotected, uh, historically important temples in Tamil Nadu. Uh, this year we initiated, I spoken with the government also, government of Tamil Nadu and they given a uh, government order for permission to carry out, ex explore our temples also. Explore our temples also and try to uh, uh, bring out, then only we can able to save. Now they are in trouble in high court case and high court is insisting trying to protect our entire temples. So they are allowed us. Uh, 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 they are allowed us to, to carry out the survey, so I have got the permission, I initiated the work. Next. Uh, actually, recently we have seen near about uh, 30, 20, uh, 50 temples. We have, uh, they have bifurcated it uh, region wise. Try to concentrate first on nearby, that is, Tordaimandra region, then we go for <coughs> early, uh, early Pandya structural temples. That is our concept. Just to be, these are the uh, very uh, unpopular temples. Unpopular temples, not known to anybody, but all villages possess the temples. Next. Next. The Kondai Madalam. Another one is uh, Pandya region. Next. Uh, these are the few temples. These are uh, um, uh, temples of uh, Vandalur, very close to Chennai. Vandalur was having the inscription. This is Gajaprastha uh, temple, that is elephant back temple. Elephant back temple usually is constructed for Shiva temple, but it is peculiar, it's used for Vaishnava, Vishnu. It indicates the temple was continuously converted. Yes. Converted. The Shiva temple was converted for the Vaishnava temple. So, this is the one of the examples. So, uh, this uh, documentation was uh, started by us next. Then you can see Somangalam. Somangalam is the one of the beautiful absolute uh, temple of. Uh, uh, near by Chennai, unpopular temple of Siva with, with Chola inscriptions. Next. Just we have uh, took a preliminary photography only, not detailed photography has been done, as well as no uh, detailed drawing documents have been carried out. Uh, this is another near uh, Sarpadancheri, near our Veeraragavan's house. <laughs> Veeraragavan's house. This is entirely dem actually destroyed. The temple is you know, available uh, portion. Is, this is the only available portion. This belongs to Chola. Chola temples. Next. This is Nayadu Pakam. Nayadu, Nayadu Pakam. Nayadu Pakam temple. Another upside down character. Next. This is Manamari. Uh, actually, we particularly documented upsiders. How many upsiders in the temples are there in that region? Nearby Chennai, as well as Tundra and 
so many absolute temples are there but not to not known to everybody so those absolute temples are now slowly they are demolishing and reconstructing the new temples they are unable to uh, provide such a conservation methods actually conserve if you go and conserve the temple it triggers a lot of fun it is difficult to conserve that is why they are simply they are um, 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 pull down and constructing a new material such things are happening that has to be stopped otherwise we don't get any evidence of temples in future next this is another absurd temple see how slowly they are modernizing the the structure of the uh, vimana has modernized it's cement now it was a vimana was uh, lime lime plaster once then now it they converted as a cement next see next this trishulam trishulam now has been uh, near the airport now uh, with the strict instruction they are removing all tiles inside they fixed the tiles one sapani tile the bathroom tiles they fixed inside the temple hiding the entire inscriptions we are our committee as well as uh, the heritage committee has instructed to remove they are remo removing now by hrnca and doing pure conservation work now they are digging the temple they covered with the entire fill up filling material they filled and uh, they elevated now they are digging and originally how uh, the adhisthana was existed they are now seeing and a uh, proper adhisthana was to be maintained as recommended then only we can able to say next see this four temple became a new four temple temple was the one of the uh, absolute temple of the chola it's became a new now next <coughs> then uh, where is the nagar inja inja also uh, this is the pandya mandala just i showed before is trondai mandala now i am showing pa pandya mandala inja inja with the inscription of pandyas later pandyas of the uh, 11th and 13th century the, see the temples conditions next this is during our exploration we identify the temples this is very far away from the village nobody can go that is belongs to sundara pandya 13th century sundara pandya uh, temple uh, it is in dilapidated condition uh, during our tld uh, exploration i have recommended this temple to protect by asi uh, this is pending with now chennai and trichy circles they have to do initiate that the work and at least protect this temple this is the exemplary temple for uh, later pandyas we uh, we don't have any later pandya temples in our asi simply we are having palava temples and chola temples we don't have a single temples of pandyas by asi my kind request the asi to take care of so those temples there nobody is carrying try to protect the, the those temples at least we can save the architectural features this is one of the example i can show another one next you see the how it was the modern this is within the city of madurai and tell it becoming modern now <coughs> next see uh, abhi you this is also on uh, dilapidated conditions left slowly they leave this temple and they can demolish later on and construct new one yes inscriptions are copied inscriptions are copied all inscriptions are available but temples are not there we are having inscriptions as i Oh, wow. has the inscriptions but we don't have temples next see this is the um, kallikudi kallikudi near ramnagaram this also be uh, later pandya temples i also recommended uh, this temples to be protected like uh, un, uh, uh, unknown temples are lying so many unknown temples are lying all over india particularly in tamil nadu so many temples are there our initiative is try to document first and request the authorities to protect something then only we can able to say next next so no this is tirchuli temple next this is one of the very important palli pade temple you know veerapandya veerapandya was killed by aditya 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 chola Uh, Veerapandiya constructed a Pallipadai temple. This is a sepulchral temple for his elder brother. 
Sundara Pandya. This is the big inscriptions. This is his uncanny now. Next. Another one is Mudakan Kulam in a dilapidated condition. This uh, temple belongs to Letra Pandya. Letra Pandya temple has never protected by ASI. Next. This is our project just I have initiated in the month of September. Anyhow, my successor will hope, my, my successor will carry out this project. At least that has to be uh, done, then only we can able to save our documentation of temple architecture. Thank you, thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can ask me, or you have any idea how, what way we can able to protect temple can give us uh, that can be utilized by our team. Gudmian Malay Padina will be there. I don't show that. Structural labor, cave labor, then do. I'm in a sovereign, major temple. I am not, I am not going, I am not going for, he is asking Gudmian, Gudmian temple is under the protection of ASI. Gudmian Mayal temple belongs to the major group. Not in the minor group. Okay. That is lesser known Gariyari. That is not a lesser known temple. That is well developed temples like you know, Kailasanada and Tanjavur. Uh -huh. I am not going to talk about Tanjavur or Gangedu I am talking about lesser known. Yeah, please. This is the uh, ancestral site of Sanjashin. Yeah, tell me. Because a request, not a suggestion. So, more researchers can be encouraged. Uh, Yes, ma'am. In that way, the lesser known temples can be documented. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, when, uh, as a researcher, when I was doing a uh, topic on uh, Durga and Arthanarishwara, the same uh, HRMC, I am not complaining anyone here, so the same uh, authorities over on the, the position, they were, we are not allowed uh, to do any documentation. So, we somehow, with uh, lots of pressure, I have to you know, convince the HRMC commissioner and then somehow I got the permission to do Pallava to Chola period I have taken. So in the sure, case, sure, we have to. Uh, all these uh, Pandya and uh, later Pandya temples can be, you know, which are maybe the dynasty, all these uh, temples can be even uh, you know, taken for documentation. So until unless, uh, like you suggested, the documentation is not proper. We cannot uh, protect the old yes. temples. You have shown one uh, uh, Thirusulam and other. We have been to such temples yes. also because uh, part of a Chola temple. And uh, there is one Nanganallur temple. Yes. There is an inscription about the same Nanganallur. Yeah, yeah. We are not able to locate that because the temple is completely similar. Sure, ma'am, we will uh, agree, we will take over, certainly the scholars from outside, the only we can able to achieve this uh, project, otherwise it's not possible to us to do the temple survey. The reason behind the problem here in uh, Tamil Nadu is uh, every temple is, uh, belongs to living temple. They won't allow easily to document uh, the any sculpture and uh, deities. Actually, that is in the worship. So generally they are not allowing, we are also facing the troubles, that's why we, I directly went to the government and I asked the government authorities to you give the permission, then only they will allow. Otherwise, our team has faced, faced several times, they, they, they will not allow to remove the, uh, the clothes. If you remove the clothes, only you can see the attributes. Otherwise, how can you identify this the ancient one or a later one? So many temples, they change the sculptures also. I have recently found one, actually the ancient sculpture was thrown out outside and they kept new one, new idol inside. That is what astonishing to us. Such, such, such incidents are happening. So it requires collective initiative is required, then only we can able to document, otherwise we lose. Thank you. Yes.
if it is possible. Uh, I am particularly speaking about Kerala. Even when I came to Chennai, but I find, find it uh, more, they are more cooperative with us. At least when we go for documentation, they are, uh, once I got a chance to uh, go with the Maheshwari Madam. So they have entirely cleaned the sculptures and they have allowed to take photographs. But in Kerala, the scenario is entirely different. Even in protected monuments, we doesn't have our freedom to do conservation works. Sri Lakshmi Madam Sir and uh, Kumaran Sir know it very well. So if we conduct some cultural awareness program among the temple authorities, so when a court case comes, then only they approach us for our help. So to uh, corroborate that it belongs to this age, we need uh, the original features and patterns. But even they don't have even a photographs with them. At least in uh, Tamil Nadu temple, we have inscriptional evidence. We have lesser inscriptional evidence in case of Kerala. The similar thing, above that they will paint and uh, modern structures will be added. So if some uh, uh, cultural awareness program or something if we have to do with the stakeholders, the Devasam boards are the authority. Mostly we are maintaining the temples. Ownership will be mostly with the, uh, the temple, uh, means Devasam board. So they won't even allow us to do conservation works even, even documentation also. So if we have take some initiative and have a negotiation with these temple authorities and convince that, in future it will uh, prove a uh, uh, fruitful uh, element for you to prove court case at least, then I think they may have... Uh, yes, sure, sure, sure. Actually I request the director of Try to incorporate document of the, uh, if you go to document the temples or any other things. Try to incorporate the training in the in training for the Hindu religious endowment board peoples. They are very essential for us. They are possessing not only the antiquities. In Tamil Nadu, more than 43,000 temples, we keep five branches each temple. We are having lot, lakhs and lakhs of branches are there in temples. Besides, actually my request is try to give such a trainings to outsiders, particularly Hindu religious endowment sports, university students and the enthusiasts, then only we can able to achieve this. Actually, I, I would answer this question that this is for them only. Them only. Actually, this, particular, this particular, this is not for ASI guys because ASI guys are involved and doing these things for Several years, we have crossed 150 years, long time back. So, it is not for, we are doing these things for the last uh, one and a half century or so. So, it is not for ASI guys as such, but of course ASI guys also require trainings because new people are coming and uh, they also require to know a new methodologies that, that are being adopted. But the thing is that, I always emphasize everywhere, that this is for others, mostly others and we, without your participation, endowment boards, NGOs, and then uh, religious bodies, trusts, it is for you only, it is for the general citizen and we'll aware citizen because uh, even, uh, see, awareness, heritage awareness is one thing, and documentation and preserving heritage is a different thing as Dr. Ramakrishna has already discussed. I, uh, people who are having uh, very highly qualified, they are having very great CV and high education, that doesn't mean that they are aware about heritage and its protection. They may be aware of heritage, but how to protect it? Because we have several um, heritage enthusiasts in West Bengal. They go and document temples and come back and they said that these are in dilapidated condition. Those are protected by ASI. Okay. And then they go to some temples which were totally renovated, colored newly. Those are old temples and they said, okay, see how they have protected. You have to understand the concept of authenticity when you are documenting as well as protecting. Those who are totally renovated like the ones he has shown, people who have done it, 
they are not unaware of the heritage values. They know that it is very important. That's why they wanted to renovate it, color it, make it completely new. But it is losing the authenticity. It is losing the authenticity. No one will go to see Taj if we just demolish it and rebuild it. They will, everybody will cry that, okay, Taj is got, the Taj has lost his heritage value, authenticity. So similarly, that's the thing, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Ramakrishna has given a very illuminating talk. I thank him for that. And as we always say, please come, please come. The citizen, aware, conscious citizen, and all other institutions. Not only Tamil Nadu, this one is for Southern all, region. All over India. All over India, they have the same similar yes. problem we are facing. Actually, not aware, the, actually, donors are not aware. They want their name in the temple. That is why they are renovating, <laughs> the funding and renovating without seeing their heritage character. Anyhow, thank you, thank you very much. The opportunity given to me to talk in this conference. I'd like to thank my director, um, uh, Dr. Madhurika Samanto, and others, colleagues. Thank you, thank you very much.